Welcome in, everyone. If you're excited like myself and many others for the Western launch of Lost Ark, then you're among friends. Today, I'm going to go over the launch itself and include some tips and wisdom for your first 24 hours and beyond. But first, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Who knows? I might even be streaming right now. Let's not waste any more time. The first tip is if you're brand new, you're not one of the elitists that's coming in fully prepped and fully prepared, you've never played Lost Ark before on any of the other regions, then I highly recommend doing the prologue and also taking advantage of the welcome challenge that is designed to teach you the game mechanics. You'll have the option to skip this if you'd like, but I think for a brand new player who's just jumping in and trying to experience and learn everything, do the prologue and the welcome challenge. Not only does this help set up the story for the game before the main story begins on your character, it also exposes you to many of the gameplay features you'll run into later. It's a nice primer to jump into the game. It also gives you a one-time benefit the first time you complete it, so it is worth doing. And the second tip is to pace yourself. Lost Ark is like a buffet, but you can only hold so much food in your stomach before you get full. Pace yourself and don't be afraid to leave gameplay systems behind and content for later on after the launch is over. You'll run into things like the rapport system, which allows you to develop relationships with NPCs in the game, cards, collectibles, and life skills like mining, herbalism, and felling trees. And all of these can easily sap all of your attention if you aren't mindful. There's so much secondary and horizontal content in this game that you can easily lose days or weeks wandering off into a different direction and playing one of the things where, without focusing primarily on your character's progression if that is your main goal. So pace yourself as you're going through. And for number three, speaking of life skills, it can be tempting to tap into every mining node and tree that you walk past, but this actually isn't necessary. You have daily life skill energy that will cap out, so it is valuable to grab some nodes as you're leveling, but if you are focused on progression, your primary, primary objective is to reach the soft cap of level 50. Grab enough resources to prevent your life skill energy, which presents as a green bar at the bottom of the screen, from being capped out because it's always regenerating, and make sure you collect enough resources to keep the upgrades in your estate on your island flowing. These generally take a long time, anywhere from a portion of a day or to a full day or more to complete the upgrade. So as long as you're not capped on life energy and your estate is making progress, you don't really have much need before you are later into the game to start collecting all these life skill resources. For number four, let's talk efficiency. Yeah, this is a big thing on everyone's mind, is figuring out how they're going to spend their time to get the most out of Lost Ark on launch day and launch week. If your approach to Lost Ark is a laid back one, then please do enjoy the ride. There are dozens of different areas of the game to get lost in while playing, and you can easily spend all of your time doing so. But for those people who want to be efficient, here is a short list of what to keep in mind as you play. Whatever you do, make sure you get every triport along the way, or at least one triport in every zone. These are the waypoints you'll find on the map that you can instantly teleport to later on. So as you're going through the map and doing the main story quest, grab these anytime you pass by them. It's just a simple click and you're good to go. By the way, you can quickly teleport to these on your overlay map from tab by holding alt and clicking on them without having to go to the waypoint list. How you manage your inventory is up to you, but I strongly suggest that you save all of your instant HP potions as these are really hard to come by at end game, so you'll thank me later. Spending them while leveling when you pull too many mobs, you'll regret this when late game you desperately need them in encounters. This is especially true if you got the high level ones from the Founders Pack. And the fastest way to level is to complete only the orange main story quests that you'll find in your quest log. They'll all be marked with this deep orange color. Doing so will get you to level 50 exceptionally fast. I think the world record is around 10 hours, 
So on launch day, you could be soft cap level 50 if you just skip ev basically everything and focus on the orange quests only. Random mobs you encounter are low value and most of the side quests can be left for later as well. So you'd be surprised by how much you can actually just walk by as you're leveling quickly. So if speed is your goal, then just follow the orange quests. Next, let's talk end game. The big question is what is important to do once you reach the soft cap and you start moving towards level 60. So let's briefly cover this so that you have an idea of what you're aiming for while keeping the video short. Your primary progression for each character comes from doing your dailies and weeklies. So the sooner you get to level 50 and start doing these, the better. Dailies consist of doing two chaos dungeons, two guardian raids, and then jumping into your Una log and doing your Una quests and your Una tokens. These are the green dailies and weeklies that you can do their quests then you can also do your weekly reset content with abyss dungeons and heroic challenges doing your daily and weekly resets is the lion's share of your progress in this game once those are done then you can start doing the secondary and tertiary activities like leveling more characters leveling life skills finding collectibles and filling out your adventure book which all have plenty of benefits number six is Try not to overstress. It is an MMO, but it has so much side content that you'll be easily overwhelmed by what's going on. It's a game that's meant to be played over a long period of time. Figure out what's important to you, what kind of content you want, and then just get started. I see tons of people panicking over not knowing what their main class is going to be, not knowing if they have the perfect route or the leveling build or how they're gonna handle end game. So let me put your mind at ease. This game is alt friendly and you can complete most of your highest progression activities per character in just 20 to 30 minutes each day. Not only that, but changing your main, main character is easy until you get deep into the latest tier 3 content when your builds start becoming more costly to change. However, most players won't be deep into tier 3 until after a few months or more. So if you don't know what class you want to play on day 1, don't sweat it. Also, if you want more class info, I have a picking your main class guide as well as starter guides for every single launch class. You'll find those linked down in the description, in the comment section, and in the playlist that this video is in. And a quick note on the perfect builds and what skills to use. You should feel encouraged to test everything that your class can do out along the leveling road. You will find what works and what doesn't on your own, and you'll figure out what your endgame build is going to be. But changes happen in this game. Things get buffed, they get reworked. And it's good for you if you're if you know what your main's going to be to explore all of the abilities, all of the talent modifications, so you have an experience with everything your class can do. So if something changes or gets reworked, you are not left for a loop wondering, I've never used that ability before. How does it work? Ultimately, this game can be split up into two categories of main progression for your character and then downtime activities. So focus on which one you think is more valuable to you, whether you're just here for the vibes and you're hanging out and just enjoying the game then just explore have fun it'll take a little longer but you're there for the fun anyways if you're main staying and you're trying to do progression only rush to soft cap level 50 skip as much as you can and then start doing your dailies and then make sure you have your alts leveled and you have your dailies done on them and once you have that You'll have plenty of downtime during the day and during the week to do the extra things like life skills and rapport and unlocking collectibles and Makoko seeds and doing all those sorts of activities. The other thing you can learn to use is the Bifrost book. So this is one way to get around the world. You'll have one Bifrost salt slot available to you when you first make your character. You can actually unlock others by doing quests or by having Beatrice's blessing. What this does is it allows you to save your current location as a point of teleport separate from every other teleport in the game and then on a very long cooldown you can teleport there uh, and then you'll be able to put it back so actually if you really need to go somewhere across the entire world you can save that as one of your locations and then move there using the bifrost system another way to move around is to use the return point system which is still separate from the bifrost the triport teleporting and the boats you can actually have a home point which is kind of like a hearthstone so you go into a town and you find the crystal of return which is a waypoint it'll be blue you go to the change return point and you can designate that return point which is usually main cities uh to your teleport then if you go to your song list 
you'll be able to cast the Song of Return, which allows you to teleport to your return point with a two hour cooldown. So it's actually good to know about these things as you're moving around so that you know that you can set points along your journey so you don't get stuck having to travel really far. The other thing to know is teleports through the Triport system, which is something you're going to find in each map, these things here. These are limited by continent. So if you go to the world map, you can see that there's all these different continents you'll go to. I'm currently on the Burn continent. But if I go over to Lutheran and try to uh, teleport to any of these, you'll see it's going to be blacked out because I can't teleport across the ocean. The only way to get across the ocean is either to use the Bifrost, the return system, or to uh, actually go over there with a boat. However, it's pretty straightforward to get there. If you really, really need to get to the ocean, you see I'm even I'm in Burn Castle right here. You have to go to the harbor to get to uh, out into the ocean, but very easily you can hit Bifrost to ship in the bottom left. Uh, you activate that and it'll actually move you through a portal to the nearest dock so that you can travel over to the next continent. Then once you're in port, you can go ahead and uh, teleport out. And when you're out of port, you can move around in your boat and you can go into the map and move around. It's super useful to use the automatic route, hold alt and left click somewhere, and it will automatically move your boat to that location. So if you need to go from one harbor to another, you can just activate it and go down to the next harbor to get into that area to teleport around using the triport. However, I told you the hard way so I can show you the easy way. You'll likely be doing uh, open boat travel when you're going to islands specifically or going to specific quest areas. If you wanna travel even faster without having to go to your boat or even going to dock, near each dock, there's going to be an ocean liner. You go ahead and talk to this guy and then there are ferries that go from each continent to another. Um, as long as they're connected and you can very easily do this. These are very short. You click on it, you pay the price uh, and it'll take you to that continent over the course of 30 to 60 seconds. And then you'll be there without having to travel as a boat at all. And one more quick note, just to put your mind at ease. When you travel very far, you see you have durability for your ship. If your durability ever reaches zero, you can just go to a port and repair it. It doesn't matter if your ship sinks out in the open, you just can't go to non-ports if your ship is broken. So if you want to travel across the world, you can set up a, a, a waypoint way over there if you haven't been there before. Even if your ship breaks, you can go to a port and repair it. So if you want to just go here, get some food, get a drink, and then come back, repair your boat when you get into the harbor, that is an option for you as well. And you can see now that I'm broken and my ship is at zero, I can actually still move my boat around and everything's fine. I just won't be able to dock anywhere that is objective based. I have to go to a dock and repair my ship uh, before I do anything else. I am so excited for the launch of this game and I hope you are too. It feels like Christmas Eve as we go into the launch of it. Have so much fun when the game comes out. Really enjoy it. Let me know if you figured out what your main class is going to be down below. And if not, I'm sure people can help you out in the comments if you post as well. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.